The American record producer Spencer Proffer still remembers when he heard the song American Pie for the first time more than 50 years ago. I realized that this was something that was an epic job, and because it was very socially and politically motivated and that country was divided at that time, it really gave a chord, he told the guest host of the sixth Saroja Coelho. The song was the creative product of singer and composer Don McLean. When he first launched in 1971, the full song lasted 8 minutes and 42 seconds. Initially, the radio stations only played half of the song because the whole piece could not fit on one side of a 45 RPM album. But he had such a great reaction on the radio, a couple of stations had the common sense of touching everything and exploded, said Proffer. The new documentary, The Day the Music, Don McLean's American Pie will come out exclusively in Paramount+. Plus. Ahref equals HTTPS slash slash Twitter slash Paramount plus ref underscore SRC equals TWSRC percent five at watch ref equals HTTPS slash slash T slash edis belittle FT spit slash a Don McLean. American Pie is the theme of Proffer's last documentary, The Day the Music. In it, Proffer explores the meaning behind McLean's song, and McLean himself opens on the 1959 plane crash that the musician Buddy Holly, to which the song refers. The documentary premiered on July 19 at the Paramount and Transmission Service. Proffer spoke with Coelho about American Pie, McLean and Holly's connection, and division in the United States at that time. Here is part of your conversation. What was the song that hit you so hard? Personally, there were different images, visual images and words. Curiosity abounded when I wondered who was the jester. Because Bob Dylan was a big problem at that time, the jester was called. Elvis had just resurfaced after the fantastic special return of him. He had marching, and I remembered marching for civil rights, and I didn't know if that was what he meant. I knew there was a lot of division in the United States, and I thought there was some element in the form of a great fire song with a fantastic melody. So it seemed like a work of art, and I really put chicken skin when I heard. We had just listened to a clip of the documentary where Ed Freeman, who produced the original song, called him a praise for a dream that did not take place. What was happening in the United States and how the song cut that? 